Hello everyone, this is Dr. Zainab and I hope you are having a great day. Today our topic is direct and indirect inguinal hernia. But before going to our topic, you must know what is hernia. So, hernia by definition is abnormal protrusion of cavity contents through a weakness. That weakness may be normal or abnormal, okay? So, abnormal protrusion of cavity contents through abnormal or normal weakness in the wall of cavity along with the lining of cavity. So, in simple words, you just re remember that it is abnormal protrusion of cavity contents through a weakness, okay? So, there are different types of hernia depending on the location like umbilical hernia, paraumbilical hernia, hiatal hernia, lumbar or petits hernia and indirect and inguinal hernia okay so today our topic is direct and indirect inguinal hernia i have i have already drawn a diagram for you so you can see that there is this is inguinal ligament running from anterior superior iliac spine to pubic tubercle above that we have inguinal ring running from deep inguinal ring to superficial inguinal ring triangular shaped then below uh, beneath the inguinal canal and inguinal uh, inguinal ligament there runs inferior epigastric vessels okay you can see inferior epigastric artery and inferior epigastric vein and medially we have rectus abdominis muscle so these whole structures form a triangle known and known as Hazelback's triangle this whole triangle is known as Hazelbeck's triangle or inguinal triangle. Okay, so let's recall the uh, borders of Hazelbeck's triangle. As you can see here, medial border of Hazelbeck's triangle is formed by lateral margin of rectus abdominis muscle or linea semilunaris. Okay, medial border is formed by lateral margin of rectus abdominis muscle or linea semilunaris superior lateral border is formed by inferior epigastric vessels and inferior border is formed by inguinal ligament okay so now let's recall the differences between direct and indirect inguinal hernia so indirect inguinal hernia passes through the inguinal canal indirect inguinal hernia passes through this inguinal canal this inguinal canal okay while direct inguinal hernia it passes through posterior wall of inguinal canal it means it passes through Hazelbeck's triangle okay the second difference is indirect inguinal hernia passes lateral to inferior epigastric vessel it passes lateral to inferior epigastric vessels while direct inguinal hernia it passes medial to inferior epigastric vessels okay it passes medial to inferior epigastric vessels while indirect passes lateral to inferior epigastric vessels third difference is that we can control indirect inguinal hernia by putting pressure in the deep inguinal ring why how as you know that indirect inguinal hernia passes through deep inguinal ring and then so on so we can control it by reduction in the deep inguinal ring why as right inguinal hernia does not pass through deep inguinal ring so we can't control it the fourth difference is that indirect inguinal hernia is not palpable why because anteriorly there lies aponeurosis of ex external oblique muscle that's why we can't palpate it while in indirect inguinal hernia the defect ca can be pal palpable in the anterior abdominal wall above the pubic tubercle as it lies anteriorly and it passes directly uh, from the Hazelbeck's triangle the final difference is that indirect inguinal hernia is more common in children and young adults while direct inguinal hernia is common in old age i hope you guys get it well but uh, you must remember this diagram this diagram is very much important if you can learn uh, if you have learned this diagram so it will be very easy for you to differentiate between direct and indirect inguinal hernia uh, i hope you guys get it well thank you for watching